My mic works. Welcome everyone to St. Mark's to our Thanksgiving service. Welcome to Pastor Janet who is preaching tonight and to Sherry, where Sherry leading our prayers of intercession. Um, you're also invited to stay for some more coffee and snacks. Uh, we had some great conversations going tonight, so let's keep it going. And if you like some coffee and snacks, you're welcome to stay and uh, partake. So if you're able, please stand for our welcome to worship. Jesus said that whoever welcomes one of his followers welcomes Jesus himself. So turn to the person beside you and say, welcome to worship. Welcome to worship. Whoever welcomes Jesus also welcomes God, so turn to someone else and welcome them to worship. <laughs> welcome to worship. Whoever offers even a cup of cold water or a hot coffee here at church to one of God's children will be blessed by God. All are welcome here. In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, and gentleness are all of God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in song and prayer. Let's worship God together. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. The first reading this evening is taken from 1 Corinthians, a reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus, for in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship 
of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 100 responsively. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Please stand if you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them When he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. And Jesus replied, "Weren't ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner." Then Jesus said to him, "Get up and go. Your faith has healed you." This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We'll see if this works here. Okay. Okay. Uh, my meditation text tonight comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 25 through 35. And uh, I would share that with you tonight. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understand the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want you to perform God's works too. What should we do? This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Then he answered, then they answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. Scripture says Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, my father did, and now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us this bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Thanks be to God. Well, on the we're gathered here to celebrate and give God thanks tonight. Uh, on the fourth Thursday of November, and we celebrate in 
the United States Thanksgiving. It's a national holiday and we celebrate those early settlers that came. They were actually uh, people who were seeking freedom to worship in a new and different way. They wanted to be free from the Church of England. And they uh, came here, well, actually, they left England. They first went to Holland, and after 12 years, you know, they had hard luck there. So they decided to come to the United States. And it was, the United States was inhabited by many Native Americans, uh, especially in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, where it was the home of the Wampanoag uh, tribes. And they had lived in this country for over 1,200 years, or excuse me, 12,000 years. And they were very familiar with this country and all the plants and had sought that out. And the European settlers landed here in December of 1620. Now, that's about 400 years ago. Now imagine going to a new country and you planned on it being warmer. And it wasn't warmer. You have to start thinking about shelter. In December, what kind of food are you going to find outside? Most gardens are froze over, right? So they had a very hard time. And... During that travel, that first year in their travel from Holland, they lost half the people. So it went from 100 people down to about 50 people, or a little less. That's an amazing loss. Are there 50 people here tonight? Count, Terry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, about the same number that is here, and... If we filled another few pews back, we'd lost half of them. I can't even imagine a new country, no place to live, no food to eat. What are you going to do? So after a while, they came across a, a fella and he was a Native American, and I can't ever remember his name, Squanto, thank you. Yeah, C notes are good for something. And Squanto happened to be of a tribe, and he knew some English because he had been associated with other people of English, and he'd learned a little. And so he was able to help those first pilgrims um, to help figure out what to eat, shared with them some of their food. And they kind of made an alliance to help one another. We'll help you, you help us. We'll protect each other against warring tribes. And so when the spring came, the Indians taught them that if you put a fish down with your corn, it deteriorates fertilizes the corn, and you can have a fairly good corn crop. Taught them about pumpkins and squash and other things that grew here in this country. Um, taught them how to fish, how to hunt deer. Just basic things. And during that first year, it was tremendously hard, and the next year, uh, they gathered together, and as they gathered together, they celebrated what God had provided for them. God had provided a lot for them. I think as we take a look at that, we can think about what they were given. They were given um, wonderful, wonderful gifts, and they were given the gift of community. They were given the gift of courage in the face of adversity. 
Those first settlers had persistence. They loved liberty. And they expressed that that next year with gratitude to God. And that's what we're kind of doing here. Think about it. We've been busy with planning and then irrigating and then harvest. And it's not quite the busy season for Christmas. So it's a time to pause and reflect on the year and give God thanks. We can thank God just like those first did for, uh, first settlers did for their Native American friends, for the generosity we have, the neighborliness that we have with one another, and the friendships that you form throughout the years. Yes, we can give God thanks for the food that he has provided, but it's more than that. It's about family and friends and gathering together to give God thanks and to think about how he's provided for us. In our scripture, the people were wanting to follow Jesus because they were, Jesus was fulfilling their physical needs. And I thought about how frustrating that must have been for him. He was wanting to provide them with spiritual food. And all they cared about was the physical stuff. And when we take a look at that chapter, Jesus is kind of upset with them. In fact, he tells them, don't worry about the physical stuff and come. Instead, I want you to eat of the spiritual food that the Father's given to you in me. And the only thing that God really wants out of you is for you to believe in him. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And then they referred back to Moses in the desert and well God provided Moses with food for the people you know I think they were trying to make an excuse but Jesus said to him it wasn't Moses that provided the manna it was God that provided the manna and Jesus said that he was the bread of life. Anybody who came to him would no longer be spiritually hungry or their soul would never thirst. And I know we don't have Jesus physically with us, but how do we do that? How do we feed ourselves? How many of you like fasting? Once in a while, it's a good thing. And I thought about if we fasted for a few days, it would be okay, right? But let's think about long term. You'd waste away, right? And what happens to us when we don't delve into scripture and study it for ourselves each and every day? Our spirit withers. And the only way we can sustain a healthy spirit is to delve into the word of God each and every day. And I know those first settlers did. They had to keep themselves going. And the only way they could do that was by being sustained with the word of God. So many times we kind of put God in our society today, we kind of put God, eh, he's supposed to be number one, but maybe he comes after the ball game. Or maybe he comes after uh, I get my work done. Or maybe he comes after, no, God doesn't want second or third place. He wants to be number one. Number one. And when we as a country, once again, learn 
to put God first rather than self, our nation can turn around. But until then, we'll have struggles because we're spiritually hungry and thirsty. That's wrong. what's wrong with our society today. That's why there's school shootings and on and on and on. Problems of all kinds. But it's because we have forgotten as a country to eat the bread of life each and every day. Amen. church on earth, let confess our faith. I believe believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He He ascended ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Knowing the one in whom we trust, and with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us, We offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord our God, we celebrate the bounty you share with us. Place in your church a heart of thanksgiving. Help us share the bread that is Jesus Christ so that no one will ever hunger for anything. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Your creation is filled with life. You provide fields and orchards, streams and lakes, animals, and plants in endless variety. Fill us with wonder and awe at your handiwork as we seek to live humbly among all creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be close to people for whom this is not a day of celebration, but a day of mourning. Make us mindful of all the people and nations with ears to hear and hearts to listen. Make our daily thanksgiving a path to reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Watch over our community and guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
Be the safety of those who travel and grant joyous times with friends and loved ones. Bring reconciliation to families in discord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you are near to those who have died in you. Relieve our worries and give us the joy of your saints, who in unending truth, purity, and excellence praise you always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Trusting and delighting in you, we commend all our lives into your loving hands. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. As beloved children of God, let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord of all creation show her blessings and favor upon you. Grace your thanksgiving table with his presence and fill your loved ones with peace. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. So go in peace and be a blessing to the world. Thanks be to God. Thanks.